Hey guys, I'm Dave Rubin and this is the all new Rubin Report. We're in a great new studio with an awesome new set and a fantastic new crew. As many of you know, over the last few months, I've been really disappointed by people supposedly on my team, the left, on issues of political correctness and free speech. Toss in the social justice warriors and our lapdog media and debate, and I mean true debate, gets totally tossed out the window. To me, there is literally nothing more important in a democracy than free speech and debate. We should debate everything. We should talk about everything. We should engage in ideas that we aren't comfortable with, and we should let the best ideas win. That's how a healthy society based on rational ideas and a secular government should work. But too often these days, it simply isn't what's happening. In September of 2015, Dave Rubin launched The Rubin Report as a long-form political talk show. After years of identifying as a progressive on the left-leaning online news network The Young Turks, Rubin became increasingly disillusioned with the political left. Upon departing from The Young Turks and changing his political identity to a classical liberal, he established himself as the host of civil and productive one-on-one -on -one interviews with influential figures, and even as the moderator of calm and constructive debates. For the most part, you are double attacking this girl. Guys, guys, this double attacking this girl right now guys, because you attacked her in a video, yeah, and made her cry, and now you're guys, using her to make yourself sound guys, good. Guys, guys. Yet, in spite of the Rubin Report's refreshing civility, there has been a reoccurring criticism of its host. As it generally goes, the criticism is: there are people who go on the Rubin Report, they say things that are demonstrably untrue, uh, or at, or at minimum highly deceptive and Dave Rubin doesn't challenge them. My interview style, I've said this many times, is I believe that the best way to interview somebody is to really be able to hear what they think and the way you do that is you listen. If you let people speak, you can either figure out if they know what they're talking about or not. This particular interview style was adopted from one of the greatest interviewers in the history of broadcasting, Larry King, whom Dave Rubin regards as a mentor. My friend and mentor, uh, is Larry King, and I mean, he's truly the king of this, and I think uh, the best piece of advice he ever gave me, and I think I had already incorporated this without even knowing it, is that he said to me, he said, you know, Dave, when I had the show on CNN, it was called Larry King Tonight, and my name was in it already, so how much more did I need? And I try to view it the same way. I always thought that my opinion as an interviewer didn't count, that I was there to learn from what the guests thought, I left my ego at the door. The name, my show was in the, the name of the show was Larry King Live, so I'll be back. So they knew who you were. I know, I, so it was who, what, where, when, why, and the guest counted. On a lot of these shows, the guest is a prop for the host. Mm -hmm. The host used the word I, I is irrelevant. I don't care what the host thinks. Sometimes I did get into arguments, but I found that in those moral areas, when I got into an argument, what happened was it may have seemed exciting, but you didn't learn anything. It was just two people yelling at each other. Because of that, it's like, what, what would be the point of every week, me bringing on somebody so that I can berate them or battle with them or whatever? Let me, you know what, if you let someone talk, usually you'll find, you'll watch them put the noose around their neck and hang themselves, <laughs> which I may have done here today. To anyone even remotely familiar with the state of discourse in the 21st century, this must seem like a breath of fresh air. The odds of a conversation devolving on a television program, an online program, in YouTube comments, on Twitter, or in person seems like a virtual guarantee. And here is this political talk show with a host whose style of interviewing is modeled after the great Larry King. He prefers to only ask questions, he does not argue with his guests. So what is it about this criticism that Dave Rubin, as a host, ought to be arguing with his guests? Well, since Mr. Rubin's interview style is modeled after Larry King's interview style, let's examine the kind of host that Larry King is. King believes that the opinion of the host doesn't count. The host's opinion is irrelevant. He would not make it known if he agreed with his guest, nor would he make it known if he disagreed with his guest. And one more thing worth noting is that Larry King, as a host, never had an agenda. Personally, I never had an agenda. I never went on the air to hurt someone or to boost someone. I just try to ask good questions and listen to you're them. You're not boosting me right now? No, I, oh. well, you're interviewing me. Oh, right. So I ne you forgot where you are, Dave. <laughs> I've never, I, so I never had an agenda. 
If we compare these qualities with Dave Rubin's qualities as a host, we find very few parallels. On the first and perhaps most fundamental quality, we see a difference. King considers his opinions irrelevant on the air, but Rubin consistently renders his opinions relevant. While King would never begin his program by telling the audience his personal thoughts, Rubin deliberately begins his program by telling the audience his personal thoughts. Each Rubin Report episode begins with a direct message, where he can be counted on to present his personal point of view on one of many hot topics. Regarding the second quality, we find another discrepancy. King does not state his agreement with his guests, but Rubin does, and with such frequency in fact that, believe it or not, it's been satirized by one of his own fans. I agree with that. Honestly, Dave, if you believe that you can just agree with your guests on everything they say, you're totally- I agree with that. It's only until we arrive at the third quality listed here that we find a similarity. The quality of a host who does not disagree with the guest. This is a quality that King and Ruben share in common, but it appears to be the only quality that these two hosts share in common. On the final quality, unlike Larry King, Dave Rubin has a political agenda. His agenda is to defend liberalism and to reform the political left, which is not a bad thing. The most admired men and women in history had political agendas. There's nothing inherently wrong with having one, but there does seem to be a square peg in a round hole with with regard to Ruben's interview style contradicting the style of his mentor, with one exception, of course. And that brings us back to this recurring criticism. Why doesn't Dave Rubin challenge his guests? Perhaps the most charitable version of this criticism can be found in the top question of a Reddit Ask Me Anything. The criticism itself is in the form of a question, and the question itself was asked by a person who actually endorsed Rubin's interview style. The question reads, we know that the general population does not have time to research each and every claim that they hear, so therefore, people regularly believe fake news. It's fake, phony, fake. As an example, in your interview with David Horowitz, he said that Obama is a communist, but instead of asking a follow-up to explain why he thinks that, you moved on to other topics. Do you worry that misinformation can be spread if falsehoods go unchallenged without further questioning? And Mr. Rubin responded by saying, in that specific instance, he kind of tossed it in mid-sentence and quickly moved on to other things. That's his opinion, and you can judge him accordingly, as you obviously do. I like hearing how people think, and sometimes berating people isn't the best way to do that. Now, just to get fact-checking out of the way, the claim in question was not kinda tossed in mid-sentence, and Mr. Horowitz did not quickly move on to other things. And that's how I know that Barack Obama is a communist. All right, so wait, let's, let's pause before we jump to, to modern day because everything that you just described there was why I thought your bio was so interesting. Yeah. Additionally, the claim in question is not a matter of opinion. Barack Obama sucks is an opinion. Barack Obama is a communist is either true or false. And lastly, there's the out of left field use of the word berating. As you can see, the question was about falsehoods going unchallenged without further questioning, not berating. It is beyond obvious that these two things are not one and the same. Because this question was not answered, and thus even the most charitable version of this criticism was not addressed, the closest we can get to an actual line of reasoning is, I like hearing how people think. And it's not much, but we'll work with what we've got. If anything is implied by this remark, it's that Mr. Rubin would prefer to remain neutral when his guest says something that he does not personally agree with. It is reminiscent of Mr. King saying that he, as an interviewer, was there to learn from what the guest thought. And as we've already noticed by now, Larry King has all the right qualities to be a neutral host. But if a talk show host asserts an agenda, broadcasts their opinions, and expresses their agreement during interviews, is it not inconsistent for that same host to suddenly become neutral when the time comes to express disagreement? You know, everyone's gonna have their critics and I'm actually completely okay with that. And by the way, maybe in five years from now, I'll look back and go, oh, I should have done that a little different or, you know, I, you know, everyone evolves and, and figures things out.
This particular style of only asking questions and not challenging the answers isn't unreasonable in and of itself. In concept, it's a viable style, but it's only viable in practice depending on the host. If the host has no agenda and they don't express their opinions, then this style works because the host is neutral. If the host does have an agenda and they constantly express their opinions, then this style is not viable because the host is not neutral. And frankly, this style of interviewing becomes even more, uh, at best, confusing when you reflect on how the Rubin Report is self-described, a talk show about free speech, big ideas, and honest conversation. There's something Monty Python-like about the host of a show like the Rubin Report not engaging a conversation, not exchanging ideas, and not exercising their freedom of speech if and when he should disagree with the guest. What the hell is the point of having speech, ideas, and conversations if you don't counter arguments? I agree with that. Well, as far as ideas go, this particular interview style seems like a bad one. It borrows very little from the host who allegedly inspired it. As a result, it functions inconsistently, whereby opinions are expressed in agreement but not in disagreement. And as a result of that, Dave Rubin unwittingly gives a lot of people the wrong impression. The impression that he agrees with his guests on everything. I agree with that. Honestly, gang, I knew this was happening. He was agreeing with all of us. This is clearly not a, a, an honest person that we're dealing with. I view him truly as a bad actor. Well, that depends on what your definition of truth is, Sam. Oh, not this again. In fairness, in fairness, this conundrum appears to be the product of good intentions. Everything about the Rubin Report appears to be the product of good intentions. But as any critic of the regressive left already understands, good intentions are not good enough. Uh, just because you mean well doesn't mean you will do well. You have to be reasonable and consistent as well. And unfortunately, this interview style appears to be neither. But if one thing is reasonable, if there is one thing that Dave Rubin has proven to be true, it's his philosophy of interviewing. When someone doesn't know what they're talking about, or when they blatantly lie, uh, they will hang themselves. You will, you can see it. They will wrap the rope around their neck, and they will hang themselves. You know what? If you let someone talk, usually you'll find you'll watch them put the noose around their neck and hang themselves, <laughs> which I may have done here today. What underlies what some might perceive as not challenging guests when, when maybe they deserve to be challenged? My interview style, I've said this many times, is I believe that the best way to interview somebody is to really be able to hear what they think, and the way you do that is you listen. You guys, don't do that. Guys, guys, right, hold on, she hold on, publicly guys, said guys. she doesn't have autism. Okay, I okay. publicly said that. I heard you okay. say so that. you lied. I didn't so you I lie. did not lie. You lied. You right. lied. Right. She does not have autism. You said she does. She lied. You are guys, period. Guys, as, if, as if you that lie. matters. First off, first off, I cannot defend matter. myself because I have a private conversation with Scott. I'm not going to say anything. She hates you. She absolutely hates you and she thinks you're disgusting. Why would you with me?